Webb in 1954 stated that every human being has four hungers. The hunger of the loins, the hunger of the belly, and I'm sure most of us here are feeling that hunger right now. The hunger of the mind and the hunger of the soul. You can get by a long time on the loins and the belly, but there is a good deal of evidence that even the meanest of men eventually crave something for the mind. For it is this craving that brought us to this prestigious institution. This craving gave us courage to remain focused despite the odds. The chief aim of any true system of education must be to impart to the individual the courage to play the game against any and all odds. Indeed, this institution has nurtured such courage within every one of us here today. For it was at this college that I really understood the power and resilience that lie in the words against all odds. And I'm sure you understood what these words mean. These were the words that governed my stay here at this institution. They served as a testimony to me, reminding me that I was in pursuit of excellence. We were all in pursuit of excellence. And to gain this excellence, we had to make it against all odds. It was Anthony Robbins, author of the book entitled Unlimited Power, who stated that at some point in every human, in every man and woman's life, there comes a time of supreme challenge. There comes a time when every resource that we have is tested to its fullest. A time when life is inexplicably unfair. A time when our ability to persist is pushed to its limits and beyond. For every one of us here today, our sojourn at this college was such a time. There were times when we felt like giving up. Didn't you feel like giving up? There were times when we felt we could not go on. Didn't you feel that way? There were times when we felt we did not have the staying power to hold on. But we did, didn't we? That's why we are here this evening. Take a walk with me down memory lane. Do you remember the sleepless nights of toil when the assignments were due and we didn't know how and where to get started? Do you remember when classes were backed one after the other, that there was hardly any time to grab a bite? Yes. Do you remember getting a grade that was so disappointing that the last person you wanted to see was the lecturer who gave you such a grade? Yes. I am sure you can recall. Your applaud tells me that you do recall. But oh, let's turn the coin over. Let's look at the flip side and remember all the beautiful things that happened whilst we were here. Remember the friendships that we built with each other. Remember the inspiring words of wisdom that someone shared just when you thought that your world would crumble. It was right here that some of us found our sweethearts. It was here. It was here that some of us found ourselves and we got to know what wonderful things we were capable of. It was here that most, if not all of us, discovered that we have what it takes to persevere till the end. And so today, we have reaped the rewards of our perseverance and endurance. Today, we have actually personified the words of the Olympic champion, Carl Lewis, when he said, if you have confidence, you will always find a way to win. And we did find a way to win. That's why we are here this evening. For remember, it had to take a certain measure of confidence in ourselves and in our ability to persist, in our ability to succeed. That is why we are enjoying this wonderful occasion here this evening. Today, we are experiencing the flip side of the coin. After the trying years of toil and labor, today there is joy. Truly, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And yet, my fellow colleagues, with all this joy and happiness, we cannot fail to acknowledge the source from where our success has come. It is not only of our own strength that we have succeeded this evening. 
it is a gift from God. If it were not for the grace and mercy and blessings of God, none of us would be here today. And I reiterate, none of us would be here today. For only God, only God can take this feeble, mortal clay and transform it into a champion of excellence. And that's what we are this evening, champions of excellence. It is only when we recognize where the ultimate power comes from that we can experience the blessing. So if you have not said thanks to the Almighty God for your successes, I urge you to do so even as I speak. As we formally close the door on this chapter of our lives, let this not simply be the end of one phase, but let it be the beginning of new things to come. For always there are new frontiers to conquer and much higher mountains to climb. I urge you not to succumb to the mediocrity that is now plaguing our society, but set yourselves high standards and determine in your mind that whatever task your hand finds to do, you do it with all your heart, all your soul, and all your might. As you begin to use the knowledge and skills that you have acquired at this institution to accomplish your tasks, please, I urge you, do not measure your success only by your bank balances or your checking account, but rather, if you can gain the respect of another human being, if you can win the confidence of a child, if because of you, another human being can breathe better, then consider yourself a success. My fellow graduates, always remember that people are life's greatest resource. Therefore, in whatever affairs of life you find yourself, always put people before the material things of this world. Whenever you have a decision to make, always ask yourself, how will this affect others? Will this build relationship or will it destroy? Real education should educate us out of self into something much finer, into selflessness that will link us with humanity. To emphasize this point, allow me to share with you this very short anecdote entitled, The Kindness Quotient. <clears throat> Hundreds of academic professionals gathered to honor a man who had earned a Nobel Prize in science. During the preliminary ceremonies, his wife waited backstage with the wives of the other men who would be honored also. The wife of the Nobel Prize winner didn't seem particularly excited. The other women asked her why. How can I be happy with a husband like that, she asked, and went on to describe a rather pathetic home life. Immediately, the other women chimed in. Why, that's my story exactly. All had the same experience of neglect and abuse. While cameras flashed on stage and the dignitaries gave admiring speeches, a very different story was unveiled backstage. Those who were closest to the honorees could only describe a common misery. It is one thing to be right, my fellow graduates, but it is another thing to be nice. It is possible to have high IQ and low KQ. KQ stands for the kindness quotient. It has to do with our interpersonal relations with others, or as some of us would know it in psychology, our emotional intelligence. Success in life does not simply come out from how smart we are. It's not simply about how smart we are, but it is from how we treat other people. That is what matters most in life. <laughs> Let us keep in mind that we have not been educated for our own selfish purposes. No, not, not at all. But we have been educated to serve. Service firstly to God and then to this country. As you chart a course for yourselves in this society of ours, I urge you, students from the Division of Agriculture, you are now in a profession which is a buoyant part of this country's economy. With your newly acquired knowledge and expertise, I charge you to play a major role and help take this sector from the level which it is at into one that transcends time and space. 
to the students from the continuing education department. To you who have chosen to pursue studies despite the fact that you hold a daily job. I say hats off to you. Allow this kind of determination to be the theme that you live by. Continue to educate yourselves in the countless areas that are open to you. To the students from the Division of Technical Education and Management Studies, as you go out there and you learn the artifacts of the business and technological world, let your motto be to do more than is expected of you. For only the mediocre will measure the quality of work done with the wages that he receives. You are not mediocre. None of us is. Always go the extra mile. <laughs> Students from the Department of Health Sciences, I admonish you to be careful with your patients because your field is one that requires that you use not only your medical knowledge to administer healing to the sick, no, but it is also one. You must also cultivate a spirit of love and compassion that is also a healing balm. To the students of the Division of Arts, Science, and General Studies, the world awaits your insightful knowledge of science and the many subjects which you have gained a profound understanding of. Don't ever set limits on yourselves, but let your cup of knowledge be ever flowing into the numerous sectors of this society. And to the students from the Division of Teacher Education and Educational Administration, you have been called architects of society. You create the doctors, the lawyers, the businessmen, the carpenters, and other skilled workers, and so many more. Your newly acquired skills and knowledge will be much needed as you go into the classrooms. Remember, it would have been futile to go through such rigorous training and in the final analysis to fall back into your old practices. Make your teaching experience a lifelong teaching practice. Finally, fellow graduates, our time here was but a training ground. It was but a rehearsal to prepare us for the things to come. Now the curtains are going up. The stage is set, and it is our moment to shine and be models to the many who have their eyes fixed on us. As we leave here this evening, let us allow the words of our anthem to strike a resounding note in our minds. Let us truly build a name that will always last. And even as we have left the walls of this prestigious institution, let us all here continue our pursuit of excellence. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you.